the past few weeks have been dramatic, mm -hmm. stressful, mm -hmm. and worrying, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we have a new PM in Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, right? Mm -hmm. And so this week you wrote about the tasks and challenges that he has to face. But what is the most pressing ones you think? Yeah, the most pressing one for Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin and um, the Parikatan National Coalition is to establish political legitimacy okay. because um, yeah, I mean they did not get any mandate for for this uh, true, the formation of the, the government. Right? Yeah, mm. even though it was done according to law, mm. according to the Westminster parliamentary uh, philosophy, yeah. but you didn't get the mandate of the people so there are two ways for you to get a mandate okay. which uh, of course one is through the ballot boxes yeah. and the other is through ratification by your peers in parliament mm. and that hasn't been done and um, i think they have already planned not to call for the uh, parliament to convene uh, this week it okay, was supposed yeah. to convene this week i think it was supposed to convene today, today. march 9 um, yeah, so they wanted to postpone it. Um, so that gives that, that gives questions whether are you a legitimate government? You know, okay. as long as you you don't get as long as you are not tested in parliament, whether you get whether you do have enough support from the member of parliament, mm -hmm. then whatever numbers that you uh, propose or that you presented to the Yang Tipetuan Agong can be challenged. You know, mm. people can still say, hey, you don't have the numbers. You know, I have the number. You know, Tun Mahathir can still say that, and Anwar Ibrahim can say that. Anybody can actually say that. You know, hey, I have the numbers. You don't have them. How can you become the prime minister? And how can you uh, form a government? So that is the biggest uh, challenge. challenge the, the most priority, the first priority that Tan Sri Muhyiddin will have. Um, yeah, and of course, after that, we are in a very uh, crisis mode right now oh, with yeah, all the yep. COVID-19 outbreak and the slowing down of the economy. Yeah. So there's actually quite a lot of things. It's not a good time for Tasim Rudin to be a prime minister right now. We know that politics you know, takes up a lot of oxygen. But let's be frank, this comes at a time when the economy is mm -hmm. really, really hurting. You know? mm -hmm. Now, you spoke to a few experts. Yeah. What did they say? You know, we should be focusing on. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, I don't know whether you noticed that you know the oil price has dropped oh, yes, even definitely. below yep. fifty US dollar per barrel. I think today um, there are even talks that the oil, oil price wall. could actually yeah. drop even below forty US dollar per barrel. Yeah. And given the fact that Malaysia, uh, I mean the federal government depends on oil yeah. revenue, uh, I think about. 30% of the federal government revenue comes from the oil and gas yeah. sector. Right. So that will definitely uh, affect the government's uh, revenue, okay. right? The, their budget. So budget 2020 has to be calibrated based on mm. the current uh, circumstances, cu current oil price, because budget 2020 was formulated based on the assumption that oil price is going, uh, is going to average at $62 per barrel. Okay. Yeah. So now it has gone even much much lower than that um, you know what are the, the the spending that you need to scale back okay you know those are the things that uh, yeah and then of course uh, the government uh, during the interim prime minister period mm -hmm. has announced a um, stimulus package yeah. of 20 billion ringgit uh, to uh, reduce the impact of COVID-19 but uh, I don't know whether that's enough and okay. some of the economists are saying probably that we might need a little bit more than that. Hence because pump priming. Right? Yeah, yeah, pump okay. priming probably one of the needs that uh, the government has to look at. Uh, because back in, they say back in uh, the global financial crisis in 2008, 2009, Malaysia actually introduced two uh, stimulus packages okay. um, to the tune of about 60 billion ringgit. Well, of course, back then it was a global uh, economic crisis, yep. right? I mean, we were in a rec recession. Right now, until last year, we were not in recession yet. But you know, looking at the situation right now, it's not a good picture. So you know, a lot of uh, economies, a lot of companies are pushing the government uh, to actually um, 
you know, pump prime, you know, restart the economy, kick started, okay. so that um, you know it, the impact on on the livelihood of the people uh, would not be very much jeopardized. Okay, but that aside, right? Towards the end of your story, you wrote about education as well, and you know its importance at narrowing the wealth gap. This is something that mm -hmm. we've always been talking about for years, but. Mm -hmm. We know it's not easy, mm -hmm. it's hard to achieve. What do you think needs to be done? Yeah, Malaysia has done quite, uh, you know, very well, uh, successfully in terms of narrowing uh, wealth gaps mm. uh, over the last 60 years. I okay. mean, that is recognised worldwide. Um, but then, after the global financial crisis, there, is, there seems to be uh, an expansion of this gap. Okay. After we done so much in narrowing it, there seems to be expansion of these gaps. Um, so, um, and then the, the, the demography of the, of the wealth gap has changed okay. from racial based to um, strata, mm. which means that whether you are from urban okay. and rural, and whether you are from Semenanjung in mm. Sabah and Sarawak, in geographical, true. and whether uh, you are um, someone who is uh, highly educated or you are a non-educated person. So these are the wealth gaps that we need to address. Okay. And one of the things, of course, um, the most, uh, one of the most important aspects that the government can look at is to empower the poor. And mm. I think you know every government has been trying to do this. Yeah. So this government as well is not an exception. You have to focus on empowering the poor, especially those marginalized communities like the Orang Asa, yeah. the, indi the indigenous people of Sabah and Sarawak, mm. those uh, communities that are outside of the mainstream economic uh, mm. economy of Malaysia. They need to be empowered and one of it is definitely through education. Okay. I mean the Orang Asal community, the the level of, of um, dropout, yeah. school dropout is very high. Okay. So you have to look at why is this happening? Is it cultural? Is it uh, economical? Is it, you know, what, what are the reasons? And you have to address these reasons and make sure that they are, uh, they can contribute in terms of, you know, uh, the, they can join the mainstream economy and, and, and you know, uh, so that the wealth gap between uh, you know, the mainstream Malaysian and them will be narrower. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of The Age Weekly at all good newsstands.